Trudy Mackay, how do you have a constructive, inclusive debate and discussion about economic injustice in our country when so many people are desperate and so many people are angry? It's understandable that there's a lot of anger that comes with um, the economy having, you know, performed far beneath its potential. I think as an African economy, we're growing very slowly um, relative to our peers and also as an emerging market. I think what we need to do is first to acknowledge that thinking about inclus inclusion is a very deliberate act. Um, it can't, it's not just going to happen um, just as a matter of course. And so I think it's important um, that when we engage in research and analysis, we incorporate the voices um, of people who are living um, this reality. Isn't that part of the problem though, that we are always very, very good at that part? We listen, we gather, we talk, we codify into policy and legislation, but we really, really struggle to get things done that make a fundamental difference. Do you see anything early on in your role that might identify where those problems are and more importantly, what you can advise through the president that government actually does about that? Yes, yeah, so I think it's very accepted and acknowledged that implementation and execution um, has been a challenge. And there are, there's, I'm seeing a lot of thinking around how to avoid going down the grand path of you know new shiny uh, policy all the time and rather to consolidate um, our insights and what we have um, obviously sharpen it and update it but then to focus more on execution and, and implementation and also getting um, all the different segments of society to be involved in that implementation and execution to pursue partnerships uh, where it's appropriate rather than thinking that government will do it all. You've said that business needs to take some short-term pain for long-term good. Do you think you and the captains of industry have the same definition of pain? Perhaps not. Yes. Um, I think we all have different ideas about their contribution. And, you know, given the kind of difficult period that we've been in, there was, you know, people used to talk about a trust deficit. Um, and I think in that context, we need to move past that and say, okay, now that we're rebuilding and renewing our economy, what are those measures um, that can be taken? Uh, for instance, you know, transparency around pay gaps uh, within companies could be uh, an important step um, towards addressing some inequities. Uh, you, we could think um, carefully about investment um, that supports entry and also how established corporates can think about their value chains and how they support um, emerging businesses in a meaningful way. Um, I think obviously we've had a lot of um, questions around corruption and rent seeking yes. and all that. So we need to think, but what is a productive engagement uh, between businesses, uh, even international businesses, international consultancies? What's a productive relationship with a local um, partner that, that actually generates value? So I think it's time certainly to have yes. those conversations and we can converge on some understanding about what compromise and a contribution uh, to economic renewal means. Ms. Mackay, you spoke about a trust deficit in regard to business. You would have had a good view of perhaps some of the reasons for that. You were a deputy commissioner in the Competition Commission involved in a 1.6 billion rand fine for 15 companies that colluded in the building of World Cup stadiums and other infrastructure. Do you think a new era of economic justice would see not fines for those executives, but actually some of them going to jail? So there are multiple levels to that. Um, you know, we, we had an economy historically where cartels, some of them were actually encouraged by um, apartheid era economic policy. Yes. So there's been a long period of unwinding those kinds of business practices. And I think we're finally at a stage where um, I think there's consensus within business that this is wrong. Anti-competitive behavior um, is unacceptable. Of course, it still happens. Um, and even in countries that have had competition legislation, um, you know, the U.S. for over a century yes. now, there's still people forming cartels. Um, and in our case, we've had amendments to the Competition Act that allow, um, or at least that give the possibility um, of criminal sanctions being placed on executives um, in, shown to be involved in cartels. Uh, we still haven't had um, any prosecution. Uh, I suppose the bar is higher um, than just a fine. But I think it certainly already just sends a signal that this is not only wrong, corrupt, but it's, it's also criminal. You see, this comes back to where I started this, this part of the conversation, saying that there's anger out there. 
do you not need to recognize that out there, as broad conversations take place around questions of economic justice, people want to see redistribution, and they actually may want to see some retribution as well? Because it's certainly coming through strongly in the land conversation. Hmm. I mean, retribution is probably, you know, it can be self-defeating. Yes. Um, in the sense that you actually want people who've been excluded from the economy um, to have opportunity to also have the chance to thrive. And I think in a conflictual society that's um, where the emphasis on, is on retribution, it also kind of prevents that. You're all stuck yes. um, in this intractable conflict and nobody benefits and no one moves on. However, I do think that part of the anger is that there's a, there's a sense that not enough has been done uh, by, um, you know, those who were advantaged in the past um, to extend um, some or, or a commensurate level of goodwill um, that uh, black people would have um, shown in terms yes. of forgiveness and the TRC process, etc. Um, the competition angle is interesting because you have seen in, in recent times where there have been settlements that have been crafted, including in the bread cartel, which really goes to the heart you know, of poverty and, and exclusion. And the abuse of the poor. And abuse of the poor, where there was an attempt to not just impose a fine, but to have other remedies. Um, there was a price cut that was imposed uh, on the companies for a while. There was an, a fund... Um, to support entry, that I think speaks to economic justice and attempt to say there's got to be more that's done. Now, perhaps the competition space is actually a constrained place to do that. You know, somebody has to do something wrong, etc. Whereas I think we can have a broader constructive conversation with business about how to open up the economy and to contribute proactively. Do you accept that if the poor are to have more, the rich of necessity must have less? Hmm. So it's often couched that way that, you know, yes. um, it's, it's, it's almost a zero sum game. Um, I think what has to happen is that the, the rich would have to give up certain advantages and privileges that entrench um, inequality. And we have to think very carefully about that. I'm not sure if anyone has the best answers necessarily. I mean, I've followed a lot of um, what Thomas Piketty has written, for instance, yes. uh, on taxation and how that, that can um, level the playing field. Um, so it, I don't think of it as a, as a zero-sum game necessarily, but I do think you have to set the rules of the game in a way that the rich lose um, some of the momentum that's inherent in accumulation of um, wealth, especially financial wealth. And you have to do it in a way that is for the public good. I do have to quote back to one thing you wrote, and you said, talking about the African continent, experimentation with socialism and other alternative economic orders has ended. Some of the key partners with whom you're going to have to build this new economic dawn in South Africa would differ most vehemently with you on that. But the evidence suggests that um, certainly the way people have thought about socialism in the past, yes. um, especially um, this idea that you can have this central authority that sees everything, knows everything, and therefore can dictate quite closely how economic resources should be distributed. I think that has shown um, that is, it's not successful. That you still need incentives. You still need to tap into everyone um, yes. and to act accordingly. And you can't do that by command necessarily. Um, so I think that's where the experiment has failed. I also feel um, maybe economic historians might fight with me on this one, that there is something inherently... Um, natural about markets, that they form. Everywhere you go in this human interaction, people want to engage um, in an unfettered way, of course, within reason in terms of um, rules and regulations. And you don't want to dampen um, that innovative spirit. Um, for me, it's not about profit making. It's more about being creative, innovative, solving problems. You don't want to, to end that. And I feel that past experiments haven't been able to move um, society while also tapping into the best of ideas. There's new thinking yes. um, coming from left-wing thinkers, if you, you, you put it that way, um, that thinks about how the public sector can foster innovation. So it's not about government versus private sector. It's not about only just creating an enabling market. It's a bit more than that. It's about giving society a mission, saying, well, if, you know, in the past, we want to put the man on the moon. For a developing country, it could be a different aspiration. We want to raise $100 billion. Um, 
and get people galvanized around that. You don't tell them how to the X yes. degree, uh, but you still, as government, need to be assertive and, and set some clear rules and some clear missions for society. And I don't think that's socialism. I want to finish off by giving you three wishes. What's your wish for your 21-month-old daughter, Marang? Ah, I thought this was going to be wishes for the economy. Um, for Marang, I think it would be um, that she gets, you know, the opportunities she deserves. That's your first wish for your daughter. What's your wish for the South African economy? So for the economy, um, I wish to see us build a society um, without the extreme um, inequalities um, that we see today. What's your wish for yourself? I wish to make impact um, in, in the role that I've been given. I'd like to look back uh, to some key projects and say, yes, uh, we delivered on that um, investment drive. Yes, we were able to get a conversation going about the economy that you know, got um, consensus. Um, yeah, so I feel like I, I really want to um, be seen as that person who has a great support uh, uh, for her country and, and you know, what, what I've been asked to do. And that, yeah, it, it all meant something. Trudy Makaya, many thanks for giving us your time tonight on Under the Skin. Thank you.